Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, all of you for being here and uh, David for inviting us to speak. Um, I'm the uh, first of what will be known as the salami speakers, which have 10 minutes to make the case. Um, so we're going to go fast and hopefully, you know, benefit from your morning coffee in order to do that. But there's actually a rhyme and reason in the flow, because if we started yesterday morning with Clay Christensen talking about disruptive technology really in the abstract sense and the conceptual way, <clears throat> we continued with Craig Barrett talking about systemic evolution of innovation and technology. And then we finished the day yesterday with an excellent presentation of Ron Dixon talking about taking it into practice. We're actually going to start this morning with the very, very practical aspects of disruptive innovation and introducing it into the market. And maybe this is the point where we should uh, take from the suggestion we got yesterday and please relax, assume the TV position and take your shoes off or something like that. Um, but disruptive innovation is not about using technology to do new things. Disruptive innovation is really about using technology to do the same things that we typically need in a much better and more effective way. And what I'm going to show you today is really something that follows that rhyme and reason because what we're doing is really actually going back to the basics, using technology to deliver something that has been here for years when we as patients typically had a pain or a condition, we went to see the doctor. And what we're trying to do here is use technology to deliver just that. This is not about creating ways for patients to watch viruses eat up their T cells or read articles or whatever it is, but rather to allow patients to continue and do that very, very basic thing that they consider to be healthcare. This term that you see here, the doctor will see you now, is really something that I think we all viscerally respond to. This is the way that we treat our medical conditions. And following that, um, we've been working for the last three years to introduce a technology that delivers on that promise. It actually allows us to deliver healthcare services online. This is not a WebMD-like application where you can read articles or take health risk assessments. It's not a place for you to post messages and social network with other patients or other providers, but rather a system that was built from the ground up to deliver actual healthcare services and use technology to make it much more accessible, much more convenient, much more immediate, and much more affordable. What it effectively does, as you can see here, is it fosters live interaction between a patient, like all of us, and medical providers, medical physicians and nurses that are within their health plan network. So the same people that you could otherwise schedule an appointment with, you will be able to see through this system. But those of you who come from a technology background know that it's, it's really easy, you know, you, you probably are familiar with Skype, for example. It's very easy to generate a web chat with someone today. The reason why it took three years to develop this is because that is not enough to make it clinically meaningful. Rather, it actually has to speak healthcare. It has to understand the fact that there is a medical record. It has to understand the fact that this patient is a member. They have a coverage. They have benefits and deductibles. There is the notion of claims and co-pays and networks and out-of-networks and, and predictive modeling and PBMs and all this spaghetti of acronyms that actually is really what healthcare is all about. And only if this system speaks that language will it become potentially a way to really extend and project traditional healthcare into people's homes. This is the uh, kind of the most colorful and complicated slide I'm going to show you today because it really speaks about the concept of online care, how it actually works. And what you see on the right hand side is really the physician aspect of the system where the physicians in that network in the state of Minnesota or Texas or anywhere else can literally advise the system at their discretion from wherever they are and as much as they like that they're available. They can do this from home at 7 o'clock in the evening. They can do this between 2 and 4 in the afternoon in their practice if there's no patient coming in. They can simply log on to the system over the web or if they're uncomfortable with the web or they're, you know, they don't have a web connection, they can simply use their phone, call the system up and say, hey, I'm here for the next 30 minutes. There is no commitment that's required. There is nothing for them to install. There is nothing for them to pay. 
their availability is then collected into those pools that correspond with their specialties. And as you can see, and this is just an example, there are internist pool, OBGYN pool, pediatrician pool, dermatology pool, neurology pool, and you can imagine how that goes. And the system is really agile enough to notice at any point in time whether there are sufficient providers in those pools to meet demand, and if there aren't, it has a way of actually bringing additional such providers into those pools. And then on the left-hand side, you have the patient side of the system, where patients like us can, from their home, go onto the system and they have this terrible migraine at 9 o'clock in the evening or they have their child crying at 2 o'clock in the morning and they really want to get in front of a pediatrician for 10 minutes to decide whether they're going to spend the rest of the night in the ER or not. And they go into the system either through the web or through their telephone and the magic happens right here in the center where the system will bring together supply and demand and allow the two to come together live in front of each other. The best way in this short time frame to, to realize how this works is to take a peek at how the experience looks like. So this is what a patient sees when they go onto the system through the web. As I mentioned, there is a whole telephony side of it, which we're not going to cover today. And they can go right here, and there's a lot of features and functions we're not going to cover. The most important thing is right here in the center, where the patient can say, I need to see someone right now. I need the doctor to see me now. And they literally can have any one of the different specialties. Once they click on any one of those specialties, the system will move forward and present to them a list of eligible, available providers on their networks. So to be very clear, these are the same credentialed, accredited, quality providers that they would otherwise be able to see in their office. And the patient can literally flip between this list and find the ones that they feel most comfortable interacting with. And they have a lot of information about the providers. Just to give you also a side note, if the system detects that there is a provider that's currently available who has some kind of a previous relationship with the patient, whether it's their PCP or whether it's a physician they have encountered in the past, the system will bring those ones up and literally bend over backwards to bring the patient in front of those providers. And at this point, the patient decides who they want to interact with and they can, you know, simply click this button that it gets highlighted here and connect with that provider. And when they do so, this thing happens. And what you see in front of you is really the heart of the system. This is the live interactive console that both the patient and the provider see. It looks a little bit different for both sides. And it allows them to really take advantage of all of the communication modalities including writing to each other, sharing clinical information, hearing each other, and seeing each other. And again, I want to emphasize, you don't need to download or install or buy anything. If you have a browser, you're going to be fine doing this. And it also allows them to also share information and do the things of the trade that they need to do. From a physician standpoint, they would have the ability to review the record of the patient. They can see where they are, admissions, hospitalization, prescriptions, and so on. The patient has the ability to control what information is shared, and both of them can collaborate with all of these communication modalities in place. Just to give you a sense, and I'm not going to go into detail, the system goes much, much further in making sure that the provider is equipped with all they need to have in order to make it clinically effective. And this is just a view of the provider side of the system, where for the very first time, we have the ability in real time, when the provider is about to talk to that patient, bring together information from systems that you all know, analytic system, care management system, predictive modeling systems, PBM systems, and put that information right in front of the provider like a teleprompter, telling them, if you're not familiar with who that patient is, these are the key things that you need to know about the patient, even if the patient didn't communicate it. And I can tell you that some providers said, this is actually better than what I have in the practice when the patient goes in. So what we've done is we've actually collected together some of the secret ingredients of what may actually be a very, very tasty dish. We have coupled together the people that are acquiring and delivering healthcare. We've put them together in a place that has a lot of information. The physicians have the ability to review records and so on and so forth. We've bundled together all of the communication modalities known to men in 2009, including the visual component, the telephonic component, the live chat component, and so on. And we've also put in place the tools that are necessary for the physicians to deliver healthcare, including electronic prescription that is embedded in the system, as well as all of the payment aspect 
for those physicians. So physicians practicing it will actually see money deposited in their private bank account as a direct deposit. And finally, just to top it off, we've also included the notion of malpractice coverage. So physicians really have the freedom to do this as much or as little as they like without having to worry about the different aspects of healthcare delivery. Just to give you a sense of, of what's been going on with this system, and it has really been just one year, it's pretty amazing that it's been such a short time. This system was introduced into the market just a year ago. And within that year, it has gone quite a few places. On the day of introduction, Microsoft announced complete integration between this system and Health Vault, which you may be familiar with. Which means, from a PHR standpoint, and this is really a message to Mr. Barrett if he's still here, for the very first time, it's not just a PHR that stores information, it's a PHR that stores information and puts it in front of the physician. Because only then it's going to be useful. The system went live in the state of Hawaii, which was the first state to use the system. Um, and uh, the entire state is, is live with the system. Aetna Active Health announced integration uh, for the system at that point in time. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota, who is, uh, uh, we have two very distinguished people here. We have uh, Pat Garrity, their CEO, and Marianne Stomp, their Senior Vice President of Strategic Innovation, was the first to bring this system into the continental US. We went forward by introducing that physician insight capability that gives physicians what they need to care for that patient. And this was followed by an announcement made by United Health Group, Optum, uh, announcing the system to be rolled out to the entire country. And they are uh, very rapidly doing this as we speak. This was followed by TriWest, which you may be familiar with, introducing the system for, the, uh, for military personnel. And then finally, just a couple of weeks ago, Shorescript announced tying the system into the entire chain of electronic prescriptions and pharmacies around the country. The analysts have also captured and realized that this system may be changing a couple of different things in healthcare. And I'm not going to go into detail, but they put the notion of online care on, on this kind of a trajectory and went further to say that facilitating this kind of communication will transform in the very immediate future the way care is delivered in this country. But they went one step further and just a couple of weeks ago released this, um, I'm not going to give it you know, any kind of description, but this statement in a report that's called Gartner Predicts that says within the next three years, 25 of eligible healthcare will move into this platform. I can tell you that as a vendor, if it was 0.00001% of healthcare that was done here, we would be very happy. I don't even know how we're going to manage 25%, but it gives you a sense of where this thing is going. This is an important slide because it talks a little bit about what this system, how this system showed up by the public media. And um, this is just the last 100 publications. There have been over 1,000 in the last couple of months. And importantly, this is not in magazines of technology. This is the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Business Week, and so on and so forth. And the important thing about it is that they're not talking about the technology or what it does to the healthcare system. What they're talking about is what the system may do to the way that people acquire healthcare. It literally allows us to project healthcare and make it accessible everywhere in people's homes. And lastly, um, in that last year, we have gathered a very, uh, in my opinion at least, a very impressive family of corporations, both in the healthcare entity, in the uh, clinical guideline area, in the uh, technology industry, to come together really for a consortium around this platform of online care. And that allowed us also to have clout really in Washington now, where the healthcare reform is being discussed, um, really to the point that the people on Capitol Hill actually are beginning to recognize that the use of technology to redistribute healthcare services, not just healthcare records, may actually be one of the secret ingredients that will allow us to do healthcare reform very effectively. And I want to end this uh, in this time frame, because this is here, um, with one thing, and I don't know if this is a Democratic crowd or a Republican crowd, but um, with something that uh, is quoted really from President Obama's speech uh, to the Congress last week, where he said, um, we're not here to foresee the future. And we're not here to fear the future. We're here to shape the future. And when we talk about online care, for some reason or another, this actually has a very good ring to it. And I'm going to stop right here, and thank you very much.